Okay. So we're going to do the whole programming on the controller side so we know exactly what we need to do to connect to a database to retrieve user information and now we're going to add uh, information we need to create a report. Okay? So I'm going to be cutting and pasting code as we go along. So the first thing we need to do is to set up our PHP script. All right? So this is a controller, remember. So we need to first start to start a session and get the credentials, the identif identification that come from the original screen and form. The next thing we need to do is to close the the PHP script so it actually works. So here we go. So part one, start the session always so it can be grabbed and used. Part two, grab the name of the menu ID that actually did the, uh, the submission to this controller. The next thing we need to do is ask what is the name of the form that invoked the controller. So we ask it through the get method. Remember, this is HTTP, so menu ID is the name of a form in the original view. We ask for the name, so just, so just we know where that came from. Now that we know where it came from, we're sure we can get the user and password, where user and password are the real names of the text fields that got programmed in that view as well. Before we go any further, we need to close the login form, which we'll do now. All right. So for now, this controller is, is, is patching no other forms. We just made a name here in case we had another one, or, or else it could be a default action in case the origin is unknown. But that we'll take care of later. For now, we're going to work on this space here. So once we got the user and password from the form, we can start building our SQL query. Would be pretty much this. So the first thing we need to do is to connect to the database. So if you remember, we we have a personnel database with uh, user names, IDs, first and last names, and and passwords. We are coming from the local host. We are we're doing everything in one computer. Our account name is Food Tester and our password is Big Mac. We go and try the connection. And if my SQLI connect error number comes out to be true, it means that something was wrong with the connection, and we can output uh, a message for the user to see, or we can take other action as we consider necessary else the connection was was good so I'm gonna go and do the rest of the of the work so I'm gonna close my else statement right and now I'll work on this space here so I'll do the rest of the query so what I need to do now is to start building the query so I write my query. I have two parameters to work with. Those two parameters I'll ca are called user and password, two variables that I made up. So I'm going to do my select statement using those two as parameters. So we talked about being careful with the double quotes and single quotes. Just make sure to have those in any field that is a, a string field, a var card field. And the next step would be to run the query. So we use both the query itself, the string with the select statement in this case, and the handle to the connection, which was established from the connection itself. So those two parameters need to go into my SQLI query, and it runs the query, and it comes back with a result, which would be a status. The query can also 
go wrong if it if it has a syntax error if the database is not set up according to what I said any any reason would cause an error here too so we want to test for an error and that we do by asking something like this so result will have a boolean value if it's true it means that everything is okay else I need to take action so before I go and and do the the, the good case let me type in the the default which would be if something went wrong so if something went wrong I need to say it or do whatever I need to go on now I'm gonna work with the case where the query was successful so now what I want to do is to bring back the results of the query so in the case of authenticating a user we want to know if that users record appeared once in the database only once not zero not two and for that purpose we need to know the number of records that came back with the result set so my SQLI num rows will tell me how many rows got extracted from the database and it will put them in a variable that I make up here as n records or whatever name you want to give it I'm gonna test for number of records it needs to be just one else if that doesn't happen I'll conclude that my user is not registered in the database and I'll say so okay so if it's not one then it doesn't exist and I'll go and close my connection I'll destroy the session and I'll send control over to the landing page so the user can attempt to log in again or go register whichever but now I'm gonna go to the case where the user was actually found so I'm gonna fill out spaces in here so what happens next is that I have to deal with the session all over again so I, once I know that my my user actually exists I'll go and register that user into the session through a bean the bean will have a name it will be user and it will contain the name of the user that I already got please remember that I didn't do any more querying to the database because I already had the user name the user gave it to me in the form so I I had already got it beforehand so I don't need to do anything else but use it now I need to grab more on the user so I'll do a result set so I know the query was successful but now, now I want to know the contents of that one record that got extracted so for that purpose I'll create a, a record set this name is mine I, I can name it any way I want but I, I kind of implied record set in my name so I go and fetch the contents of the result into an array and now I need to go through that array for example the database contains the department area where that person works so I'll just say that I want to look into the record set and I want to look into field departments and it'll look into the, the corresponding column and come back with a name and I'll store it in a variable that I make up as department in this case now I have almost everything I, I need to start going back to the next view with the session in place except that uh, I need to uh, bring back all the uh, information on marketing and things that I need to know about the user itself so that's what's new so before I do anything I'm gonna go and start my header the header I'm gonna use eventually to do the header command and send control over to a new location but I still don't know that location so I'll just say the first part which is fixed location and I'll take care of the rest in a moment since I know the the name of the uh, department the user works for I'll go ahead and ask so if this is this person working for uh, marketing okay 
or is this person working for I have three th two more cases accounting or is this person working for warehousing okay so this is pretty much the the decision tree if it's if this person is working for accounting I'll route over to this file warehouse if if the department is un unknown I'll just go back to the landing page as a default action okay now I'm gonna expand on in customer I have an ID first name last name address and email so these are my current customers so besides having user I now have customer All right so I'm gonna deal with that now so what goes next now in my in my program is to get a list of all those customers and send them over to the view in order to do that I need to do another query so I'm gonna give you that query now here it is so I made a new query now this query is on on customers right I do my query string and I run it again just like, like I did the previous one just notice that I have to change the names of the result flag to rest two. I had just result first, so I, I need to differentiate them so I don't run into trouble later on. So I have two result and result two. They work exactly the same; they just have different names. And once I run my my query, I'm gonna go and ask if the query was successful all over again so if result 2 just as like like I did before only if it's uh, if it's true then I will do what's coming now the rest of the the string here which will be this okay so what I need to do I went ahead in time if I had my my result okay then I'll grab the information and I'll do that in a second once I do I'm gonna do a new register on the session I will create a new bean called customers and I will add to it a very long complex array as a bean and that bean I will create in this space here this bean will have a list of customers along with their names last names emails and phone numbers and once I have done so I will create the rest of the uh, of the header and I will uh, store close my close my connection store the department and head on to that other view okay All right so now I need to tell you how did I create this customers bean in the first place so I'll do this I'll do here so what I need to do now is to t to make a, a loop where I will effectively go through the result set to the new name for an array which is the the information obtained from the query onto customers so you relate this query and it has a, a flag result two. now I'm grabbing all the array data from that result and I'm storing that into a result set two, which is an array itself I also initialized a counting variable called loopy in this case so I can keep track of where am I storing things and this new array that I'm gonna send over to the client so as I loop I will store in this array in a location index starting with zero and incrementing each time I will store the result set and the field name that I want first name last name address and email which is pretty much the same structure that I shown you here first name last name address and email So this is how I build the uh, the array, and once I've done, I'm done looping. Then I will create a session with it, 
and I will route over to the new view. So really that the, the new thing that I have for you here is this uh, customer section and then once we have this running we will go to marketing index which is the name of the of the view that we are heading control into somewhere along in the view I will have to write a PHP snippet and here I will be able to look at customers as the result of grabbing the bean from the session so this is grabbing from the from the bean oops sorry this is grabbing from the bean which is either a direct consequence of having done the storing the registering so when you get the code running it's gonna look like this so you have your user Apple is the password and there is a marketing department area now that gets built there is a, a list of links that are inactive for now but over to the right you can see the beginnings of the, the report the customer catalog report whatever you want to call it and that we need to work with a little bit more once you get it running like this okay